The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Well, good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and uh, thank you for being uh, with us at this Daniel Code webinar today. And uh, good morning to uh, our friends in Australia. We now have split times. The southern states are on daylight saving. The uh, state of Queensland, where I live, is not. Uh, and <laughs> oh dear, it's not one thing, it's the other, isn't it? Anyway, yes, good morning, uh, Norbert. Lovely to see you with us. Our man from Canada has the volume, Norbert. Are you hearing me all right? You're happy with that? Good. Thank you very much. And uh, uh, Sue Athene's with us today. Uh, hasn't been with us for a while, but she's, she's, a, she's a tutorial uh, graduate and she's uh, uh, been away from trading for a while. She's had a few of her personal business affairs to attend to and she's coming back to trading. So, Sue, just send me an email. We'll set up a time uh, for you to um, uh, have a, um, a brush up. A, uh, we'll, we'll, we can, you know, do a catch up on everything. Uh, uh, Sim, uh, Sim and uh, no doubt Peck Sim as well. Up in Kuala Lumpur, great to have you with us. And uh, uh, Sim says, hello, everyone. So, yes, hello. Okay, so uh, good. Uh, there we are. Lovely to have everyone here. We've got Albert with us. He's a tutorial guy. Carol, special welcome to a lady. We don't have many of them and we need more. Uh, and lovely to have you with us. Uh, Carol, Sim, of course, and the lovely Peck Sim. Uh, George is with us and, uh, wow, uh, Bob's with us. Uh, let's see. We've got all our usual uh, friends are here. A uh, gig, most important gig. Stay to the end of the webinar, please. I've got a uh, uh, a section for you on those uh, questions you asked uh, about the blue line trades and how to trade them. Uh, Hank down in the Hunter Valley, terrific to have you with us. Grandfather of the year, uh, James with us. Uh, Jayeth, uh, uh, John, yes, hello, John H. Yes, we know, been a long time here with us. Good to have you with us, John L. Down in uh, Coffs Harbour. Uh, glad you're with us, uh, John. Hope your family's well. Uh, sorry I can't come down to see you and you can't come to see me. That's the, our borders are locked down. Uh, goodness me, what a business. Uh, Mark, of course, he's uh, going to be a, one of our great traders. He's a tutorial guy. Murph, uh, of course, is with us. Norbert up in uh, Canada. Uh, Peter, uh, the uh, uh, short-term trading guru, is with us. The other Peter's with us. Uh, Suicini, of course, I've already already welcomed Suicini. Uh, and uh, on and on we go, Tony, uh, Trevor, uh, and William uh, here. Uh, good to have you with us. So, uh, this is William Crocker from, uh, let's see, got my glasses on, Fallbrook, California. Good, glad, glad to have you with us. William, you're going to do a tutorial uh, soon, I know. Uh, gig, yeah, the beach is beautiful, will do. I was worried about you. There was a, a policeman killed in uh, Myrtle Beach uh, last week or the week before last. Uh, but anyway, it's uh, wild times, isn't it? Uh, and uh, John, thank you very much. Uh, down in Coffs Harbour, great to have all of you with us. Well, a ton of stuff to go through today, uh, folks. Uh, so bear with me. I guess you're all uh, happy counting your money. The the trading's been terrific. Uh, Gig says, uh, we're open, people are peaceful here. Is that not right that a policeman got shot at Myrtle Beach, Gig? Am I not, have I got that wrong? It was uh, in the papers. I don't know you can believe much in the papers these days, but there you are. I didn't hear, eh? Well, look, I'm more up to date on Myrtle Beach than you are, mate. <laughs> you are. Okay, <clears throat> so, uh, boy, boy, the trading's been good, hasn't it? You have a look at these. Uh, Success signals another uh, 10,000 uh, today. Uh, on uh, some of the comments I post uh, about what we've done in markets, uh, folks, remember I'm only always posting for one contract, and that's not actually how you uh, trade the uh, markets. Uh, it's uh, uh, important that if you can, you trade uh, a number of markets, and uh, uh, that's simply because it's uh, uh, less of your chance of being caught in a, um, a market that's consolidating. Some some markets will always be trending, and if you're trading across a, a three or four or five markets, or even two, 
uh, you've doubled your chances of uh, being in a trending market, uh, which is uh, very important. Okay, uh, let's uh, get moving, folks. So uh, here we are. So um, as you know, markets are uh, rational, orderly, and sometimes predictable, uh, which is uh, what we uh, do every day. Um, and uh, today, um, I've been talking lately a lot about the uh, lunar cycles, um, and I wanted to just uh, follow up today by uh, telling you something about uh, some of the greats of this game um, who are not well known, um, uh, and uh, uh, they should be. Um, this uh, gentleman that you're seeing now, let me make sure this is... Uh, change for you. We've moved to a new uh, server now. We've been kicked off uh, the old server. The government has got a thing called NBN, uh, government-owned uh, internet, which uh, we've all been forced onto. I must say it's very, very good. Um, <clears throat> Seferial um, is a very interesting character. Um, he's uh, with uh, W.D. Gann's mentor. In fact, uh, uh, the story goes that uh, Gann was from... Uh, uh, Texas, um, and uh, Lufkin, Texas, I think. Um, and um, he met uh, this uh, gentleman whose pen name was Seferial. His real name was uh, Walter Old. Um, he changed his uh, middle name to Walter Gorn Old. Um, uh, and um, he was a very, very famous man in his time. Um, and uh, he met uh, a young W.D. Gann, um, and uh, took him with him to uh, London. Um, and uh, he was a mentor to Gann, and a whole lot of Gann's work uh, actually comes from Seferial. Uh, so um, Seferial was um, a very, very well-regarded um, astrologer and a, 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 a did numerology and all that stuff. And um, uh, he was the most prolific writer. You can uh, Google uh, his books, and they just go on and on and on and on. Um, in fact, you can get them at Amazon. Um, and uh, uh, the issue that he had is that what he was telling Gann uh, was based on these astrological cycles. And in America at the time, uh, when uh, Gann, of course, was a broker in Chicago uh, after he'd spent some years in London, um, uh, they had bought in uh, the Bunkum Act, uh, named after Senator Bunkum, who introduced the legislation. Um, and that's where the word Bunkum comes from. Old-fashioned word now, isn't it? You know, you say that's Bunkum. It's a lot more polite than what we say now, probably. But... Um, because of the Bunkum Act, uh, Gann could never refer to the astrological cycles. That was one of the things that the uh, the, the uh, Bunkum Act was aimed at, uh, at, at stopping, a lot of the scams that went on with astrology and what have you. Anyway, this guy was the leading light as an astrologer, and his books are still in print, and they are massive, and no amount of work he did. And some of his stuff is quite extraordinary. I, um, I have a uh, copy uh, of a letter that he wrote to Gann predicting that the Mississippi would flood twice um, in the same season and uh, wipe out the cotton crop. Um, and uh, uh, he was accurate to within about a week. It's absolutely extraordinary. Uh, so, no, I don't, uh, I don't subscribe to the rest of his stuff, but uh, there's, some, uh, there's some touches of genius in it. Um, and, uh, you know, we should always recognise that when uh, it's there. So... Um, Seferial uh, was uh, the man behind uh, a whole lot of uh, Gann stuff. Um, and um, you can see these are some of his books, and uh, there are pages and pages and pages of it. Um, and I, I've read most of them, um, and uh, uh, very interestingly, uh, at one stage he finished up, he was the, the, the turf writer, uh, the turf consultant for the Times of London. Um, and he used to do the, the form and tip the racehorses uh, based on their um, astrological cycles, their birth times, all this sort of stuff, the time of the day the race was. And uh, I don't know how successful it was. I tried to, I got the book and tried to uh, emulate it, didn't have much luck with it. But uh, he was obviously good enough that he got paid uh, for uh, some number of years at least. So he, um, he knew many things. And there is a great lot of knowledge that... Uh, uh, 
uh, it's getting lost, um, and uh, uh, some of it is uh, bunkum, um, but there's some real gems in there as well. Um, and uh, this is the guy who was his uh, protege, uh, W.D. Gann, William Delbert Gann, which is a name to conjure with um, in trading circles. And uh, uh, Gann uh, was a broker in Chicago, um, and um, uh, many years ago I went to the... Um, CME, Chicago Mercantile Exchange in Chicago. And uh, as you walk down on the trading floors, um, uh, as they were then, <coughs> there, there's a huge staircase that, that go, well, used to go down uh, two or three stories. Um, and there was this high wall completely unadorned with anything except a photo of W.D. Gann. Uh, so he's extremely highly regarded. Uh, by brokers, and he should be, because what GAN really did, I know there's a whole lot of GAN aficionados who uh, try to use his methods to trade and what have you, um, uh, but what GAN really did is he, um, uh, he showed brokers that by writing about markets, and he was another prolific writer, you go and Google his books, um, they just go on and on and on. Um, in fact, I... I seriously, I have a storage uh, shed in Taupo full of uh, W.D. Gann stuff. And those of you um, who don't know, I, I maintain I'm uh, the world expert on W.D. Gann because I spent uh, 12 years of my life doing nothing but Gann. Um, and uh, if that's not true, it's certainly true that I must rank as one of the great buyers of of GAN gear. I mean, I got totally uh, sucked into the Lambert cans, you know, sell you these super expensive uh, charts and what have you. Um, and um, uh, at one stage I had uh, uh, representatives in London and San Francisco uh, buying GAN memorabilia for me, yeah, some of his, uh, supposedly his original uh, letters and notes, supposedly some of his original charts. Same thing, very, very, very interesting. Um, can you trade it? Uh, no, uh, and you've got to be careful when you say that because uh, I should rather preface that by saying I couldn't trade it after all those years. Uh, but it's very easy to offend people. The last time uh, I said something less than complimentary about GAN, uh, my friend uh, Jim C., uh, who's with us, uh, yeah, David, world expert, maybe because Bowden has lost it. My God, I got it. That's how I got started, uh, Mr. David Bowden, the used car salesman in Sydney. Very, very good promoter. Um, and uh, he got a lot of money from a lot of people, including me, David. That's right. <laughs> anyway, um, uh, the last time I said something less than complimentary about Gan, um, uh, Jim, uh, Jim C., very nice, great bloke, uh, done it in a code tutorial. Uh, one of the oldest Daniel Code clients, uh, right back literally uh, within the month that we uh, started the Daniel Code website or released it to the public rather I should say which was December, uh, November or December 2008 um, he started corresponding with me. Um, lovely guy. I'm, I'm delighted I've had the opportunity to uh, teach him how to trade uh, the Daniel Code method uh, but uh, shortly after that I said something uh, slightly less than comp complimentary about uh, uh, your president, uh, Donald Trump, and one of my clients from <coughs> from that lovely snow country there around near Aspen, I got very upset and said, uh, don't you know that uh, God has appointed uh, Mr. Trump to uh, lead us away from the heretic? Well, uh, I don't have um, a personal day-to-day -day relationship with uh, the Lord. Um, I certainly try to, but um, uh, I... <laughs> I make the point. It's very easy to it's very easy to offend people, and but <coughs> excuse me, and that's what's happening in in America these days. I mean, it really is the offence industry. You, whatever you say, you've offended someone. Um, and uh, it was interesting, wasn't it? The vice presidential debate with uh, Kamala um, and um, uh, Pence. Um, uh, he did very well, I thought. I actually thought she did very well also. But uh, uh, commentary depends. Uh, just depends. Uh, uh, Hank, too, yeah, Hank uh, contributed some money to uh, David Bowden. Um, uh, and um, 
Um, I've forgotten what I was saying. You have to forgive me. Um, anyway, a uh, very important uh, uh, man again because of uh, the publicity and the uh, marketing ability he had. Did a great job to uh, popularize uh, trading of uh, futures markets. Wonderful. Um, <clears throat> this is some stuff that uh, you can read for yourselves. This is actually an extract uh, from one of my articles called Le Tour Toujours uh, about the uh, Tour de France. Um, but uh, you can read this it's, uh, at the Daniel Code website under the Articles tab. Um, in fact, there's uh, Pence, here we are, what's it, who, who won it? Harris, Gann, <laughs> Gann, <laughs> and Pence, quite right. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> uh, and uh, this is from one of my articles. Um, and uh, there's about 70 odd um, published articles uh, on the website that I've had published. Uh, you should read them all. There's uh, knowledge in all of them. There's probably that number in, uh, or maybe even more, in uh, webinar uh, recordings. So uh, there we are. But uh, Gann said that when time and price are equal, a turn in the market will occur. Well, that's not quite right. Uh, it, 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 it can happen and it may happen, but not in the way that he was talking about. Um, and uh, what uh, Gann did um, is that he drew uh, angles on a chart. Now, angles are very important because uh, angles have within them uh, elements of both time and price. Um, and uh, Gann never got round to explaining that, which I would have thought was fairly obvious. But um, he does, uh, he does uh, show that in his work, this example I've given you here, 1,203 points in 1,203 days. Um, and uh, he drew these angles on his chart, and they were uh, one by one. That was a, a line that went up uh, one unit in price for one unit in time. And then uh, there was a three by one, an eight by one, and then the inverse, the one by three, the one by eight, what have you. Um, and um, he said that uh, time and price were equal uh, when they uh, were at one of these uh, support lines. Um, and um, uh, this is a, an idea that actually originally um, came from uh, the uh, mighty Seferial. I mean, he really is. If you haven't got the time to do anything else, read read uh, the Wikipedia uh, on him, and there's a, a, a book of his life. I mean, he was an extraordinary man of his time um, and hugely well regarded. Um, and uh, um, so uh, what he said is that when he took, when Seferial referred to time and price being equal, he didn't mean they were equal to each other, but they were in an equal position on his astrological clock uh, to that at which the previous significant turn had, occur had occurred. In other words, Seferial's great uh, forte was um, astrology um, and, uh, and, and numerology as well. It's, uh, it's uh, alleged, uh, and I have no idea whether it's true or not, uh, that uh, Gann, uh, coached by um, the uh, numbers that uh, Seferial produced, uh, won some part of the uh, Cuba lottery uh, back in the day, no less than three times. That was the biggest lottery in the world uh, at that stage. And uh, Seferial and Gann were using, well, they were using Seferial's numerology um, to um, uh, get the numbers in the Boy, if, if they got them more than once, they're pretty clever guys. And stuff's all interesting. You should not have a closed mind about it. Um, and even when you don't agree with uh, what they finish up saying, um, there's a lot of stuff there that is uh, worthwhile. Um, so um, he was looking for market turns at astrological anniversaries. Now, the modern analyst commonly mistakes that for an anniversary on the Gregorian calendar. Don't forget that these guys didn't use the Gregorian calendar. They used the Hebrew calendar or the lunar calendar. Um, and you'll see with uh, Seferial's writing, uh, if you follow through on uh, what I've suggested to you, have a look at the books he's written. Um, uh, he uh, had a lot to do with, this, with uh, uh, the Hebrew calendar and uh, what he calls the uh, Kabbalah of numbers. Um, uh, where I found it very interesting on a lighter note is that, um, uh, as I said, he became the turf uh, journalist for the Times um, in London. Um, and um, uh, he, did, he obviously did well enough to get paid. Um, so uh, uh, there you are. There are wheels within wheels. Um, very interesting stuff.
Okay, Gann, of course, was a great race lover. He finished up marrying a, a second or third wife, God bless him, uh, Tiger for punishment. Um, he finished up um, uh, marrying a girl who worked in the totalizator um, agency at Florida, and Gann was uh, habitually uh, took his holidays uh, in Florida, uh, went to the races, loved the racehorses, um, and married a lass that he was obviously talking to a lot uh, in the totalizer window. So um, there you are. Uh, here we are. There. Uh, this is a Gan. This is a chart with some Gan angles on it. Uh, the um, most of the um, software uh, companies will provide uh, some of the Gan stuff. Um, and you know, I mean, it's interesting. I just put this on at random. Uh, from uh, the uh, big significant uh, crash, mini crash low we had. Um, and you can see um, it's done a pretty good job uh, of defining uh, some of the turns there. Uh, pretty interesting. Uh, but uh, not for me any longer. Uh, but uh, I did spend uh, years doing it. Uh, if you're going to get into GAN, you'll find that one of the things you're required to do is read his book. Uh, it's called The Tunnel Through the Air. Um, I, uh, I'm going to offend someone again, I suppose. I, uh, I would have thought of the average eight-year-old could have written a better book. But having said that, I know some very intelligent people who say it's fantastic um, and they got all sorts of insights from it. But, uh, it's an adventure story um, uh, that uh, um, uh, has uh, all of the subliminal um, and indeed obvious messages in it. So uh, this uh, chart now, this is just the S&P with dynamic support and resistance. There's uh, nothing exciting about this chart. It's simply there to show you uh, what uh, the tunnel through the air really was. Um, and here it is. It was the uh, uh, dynamic uh, self-creating uh, support and resistance lines uh, on uh, whatever market uh, he was dealing with. And of course, don't forget, he was an absolute uh, focus on uh, commodities. He's, he's famous as a uh, commodity trader, if you uh, believe all that stuff. Uh, anyway, um, I uh, enjoyed my time with Mr. Gann, um, and uh, uh, I found Seferial uh, fascinating. Uh, if you've got time and you've got some intellectual interest, dig into Seferial a bit. It's quite a story. All right, so uh, the fourth seal. We're going to start from the macro uh, this week. Oh, Sue's reading it currently. Good luck to you. Um, I, I, uh, I struggle to finish it myself, but uh, there you are. Uh, if you want to get into GAN, Sue, I'll tell you all about it. <laughs> but uh, it's uh, really, um, uh, it's really, um, uh, better not say it, had I? Um, it's interesting. I'll leave it at that. Now, um, our fourth seal, that's uh, part of our forecasting method. Uh, we use primarily on long-term charts. It uses time and price and angles. Uh, and as I said, any angle on a chart contains elements of both time and price. So it's interesting. And the fourth seal is actually an angle. Um, and you can see here, uh, this is from uh, this week's uh, uh, release of uh, the fourth seal. Uh, this is the S&P, and you can see how it stopped, uh, or topped, I should say, uh, almost exactly, well, close enough to exactly, isn't it, uh, on that red line, uh, which is a fourth seal number. Uh, pretty extraordinary stuff. Uh, and this is the six-day chart. You'll see in there uh, at uh, the Daniel Code. I want to know if the protagonist marries Marie in the end. <laughs> So honestly, I can't remember. It was uh, probably 20 years ago that I read it. Um, and, and I didn't find it memorable. I was happy to forget it. Um, anyway, um, uh, this is uh, the six-day chart uh, of the S&P, which uh, uh, Frank DB posts for us uh, every week. He uses the six-day chart, sometimes the 12-day chart, sometimes the 24-day chart. Uh, but uh, we've always used six because... Um, that's the vibration of all markets. Um, Gan used to say, if you are worthy, I will tell you the number. And to be worthy, uh, you have to uh, buy the equivalent, uh, buy his courses. 
uh, for the dollar equivalent of around two Buick. Buick formed a great part of Gann's life, as I sometimes tell my tutorial students. Um, and uh, that was an awful lot of money back in the day. But of course, it's not right. If you're worthy, I will tell you the number. Um, and you don't have to buy me a, Mu a Buick or anything else. Um, and the number is six. So uh, right from the very start of the Daniel Code, <coughs> uh, from day one when we released it, you see we've uh, used six-day charts. Um, and they're multiples for our long-term forecasting. Uh, so this is a, the six-day chart of uh, the S&P. Uh, you can see it turned down uh, the bar immediately after its 70 period. Very interesting, the 70 period. 70 is not really a Daniel Code ratio. I call it the heathen ratio, um, and I'm going to stop doing that. There's, there's nothing heathen about the tool. It actually just comes from a different uh, part of the book of Daniel. Uh, but it was the number that Sir Isaac Newton used um, in his analysis of the uh, book of Daniel, uh, which he uh, said is the most important book in the Bible uh, because it foretells the coming of the Messiah. Uh, so um, 70 from now on, uh, uh, we use it all the time. Uh, it's uh, on our, one of our chart tools uh, that you have if you are subscribed to the website Pro. Um, and um, I'm going to refer to it from now on as uh, uh, Sir Isaac Newton's uh, ratio or the Newton ratio. Uh, but you can see what uh, uh, what Frank said about all of this. Um, um, uh, and uh, he thinks that the S&P makes highs somewhere this week um, and starts another correction lower. Uh, DC signals would guide us. Um, and uh, we wait for a DC cell signal that gets elected. Terribly important, folks, this concept of signals getting elected. Uh, we have um, uh, in the, uh, you go to the Daniel Code website, click on the trade program link. Uh, you'll see all the signals uh, for today and the carry forward signals uh, from the previous period as well. Um, and um, uh, they give you the number of where you would enter. In other words, once we've done our analysis and we think we uh, have got a signal that the market's creating, whether it's time and price or uh, a combination of them, then they are just conditional. All the Daniel Code signals are conditional until they get elected. Um, and um, by getting elected, it means that the market has to show us that it agrees with our analysis. We don't have the hubris to think that we actually know what's going to happen tomorrow. Tomorrow is for knowledge. Uh, we don't have any, uh, although uh, Mr. Seferiel tells you you can. Um, and um, uh, it's very important that you remember that all the Daniel Code signals <coughs> are um, conditional until they are elected and we post uh, in the uh, Daniel Code trade program and in the 6S uh, program um, uh, where that point is that the trade would get elected. Uh, very interesting. <coughs> so <coughs> Frank uh, is a little bit uh, temporarily uh, bearish. Uh, on the S&P, I had the uh, opportunity to speak to Frank earlier this week. Uh, we don't speak very often because, of course, he's in Belgium. Uh, I'm in uh, Queensland, the Gold Coast in Queensland, Australia. So uh, generally when I'm awake, he's asleep and vice versa. But I did speak to him this week um, and uh, he's, uh, he's very strong uh, on his uh, uh, longer term view uh, that this market uh, goes up and makes a high high uh, right into June, July next year. Um, and that article, I think it's just simply called 2021, uh, it's on the Daniel Code website uh, under the Articles tab. So do read it. Um, uh, it's been terrific. He came out with that for us in December uh, last year. And uh, uh, even uh, in the middle of the big uh, flash crash we had, uh, you know, we had the 23, 24 days down the instant bull market, then the instant bear market and then back to bull. Uh, and um, uh, the fastest uh, uh, and shortest term bear market in the history of the indices. Um, uh, but he, in the middle even of that, he was saying, I'll stick to my, uh, stick to my forecast. So uh, that's uh, Frank's forecast on the fourth seal. You should uh, read the article. It's uh, uh, 
uh, pretty terrific stuff. Uh, crude oil, uh, this is also, I'm showing you all of the uh, success commentary, the uh, fourth seal commentary, I should say, on the markets for this week. Uh, they're all there. You can subscribe to them. You should read them and start your analysis from consideration of the macro view. Um, and um, um, he thinks, uh, as you can see, that uh, uh, oil's pretty weak at the moment. Um, and uh, there are charts to go with all of that. Uh, this is uh, always great importance to our uh, gold bugs, of which we have uh, many. Uh, and um, uh, here we are. This is the fourth seal on gold. Um, and uh, this is the uh, six-day chart. You can see how this market uh, topped exactly at the 59 cycle. 59 is one of the very primary Daniel Code numbers. Uh, 29 is time. 59 is times. Um, and uh, we go on from there. Uh, extraordinary. Uh, and uh, just so uh, so perfect the way that uh, market made a turn. Um, so uh, Frank is now saying gold's now on a 59 cycle low running until uh, the 7th of this month. After this cycle is a 44 cycle uh, coming on the 8th, that's uh, like uh, today. Uh, gold should, uh, well for me it is anyway, it's uh, uh, not quite, yeah, I think it's the 8th for you people too, I must be on the 9th in that case. Um, uh, after that, we should get a rally that shows some buying power. This buying power is going to be critical for gold. If this buying power is not strong enough to get us above the September high and it turns back down, then gold is in a much weaker position than most people think. Uh, now, I know there's a typo in there. Frank, the Belgian gentleman, uh, English isn't his first language, but he does very, very well. Uh, but... Uh, uh, we don't uh, correct his spelling and typing, whatever you understand what he's saying. Uh, so very important for gold to hold the late September swing lows. If this low breaks in the face of a bottom cycle, gold is in trouble. And the bull move for precious metals will be done for a while. Uh, quite a statement, isn't it? You should be right up on top of that. Uh, so um, let's move on. This is uh, still talking about the power of these orbs. Uh, the spinning orbs, the moon uh, in particular, um, and uh, in a uh, webinar a couple of weeks ago it was called It's the Moon, uh, but not as you know it, um, I start to tell you about how these uh, lunar cycles are so important. Uh, what you can see on this chart, you can see some yellow dots that represent a full moon, uh, the greenish dots represent a new moon, uh, the letter P, the letter P on the chart, in blue, that's a perigee. Uh, the letter A is an apogee. Um, if you don't know what that stuff is, folks, uh, just go back to uh, the webinar uh, that I just referred to. It's the moon, uh, but not as you know it. That sets out uh, what these uh, some of these lunar cycles are. Very, very interesting. And I'm in the middle of a project, uh, which I have very little time to do, but. Um, I want to go through all of the major turns since 2000 um, and uh, show the uh, lunar cycles um, uh, tied up uh, with the Daniel Code ratios. The lunar cycles on their own don't actually uh, give you the information you're looking for. You have to be aware of the Daniel Code ratios. Um, and you can see here, this is actually the 2000 high um, in the S&P. Very, very dramatic if you were... Uh, trading at the time, uh, as I was, of course, with fantastic stuff. Um, and that was 74 days uh, from um, uh, the uh, apogee, which was also a new moon. Um, and uh, it was um, 44 days uh, from um, a perigee. And it was 14 days uh, from uh, the next, uh, or the, the ultimate, new moon before the high um, and uh, also gave you 29 days from the apogee before the high so uh, you've got uh, two three four five maybe more time cycles all based on the daniel code ratios uh, from these important turning points um, and it's an interesting discussion about whether the apogees and perigees are more important 
than the new moon and the full moon. And you would think they would be because at apogees and perigees, uh, what you're getting is you're getting a switch in the gravitational pull. You're either going from the negative cycle into the positive cycle or vice versa from the positive cycle into the negative cycle. Um, and it, uh, it's interesting uh, how many important market turns and uh, it's hard to argue there are many much more important than the 2000 high uh, come on apogees and perigees. But at the same token, uh, if you are um, thorough about it, you will find uh, just as many uh, supermarket turns come on Daniel Code periods from the new moon and the full moon. Uh, and what that's tied up with, I don't want to confuse you with a whole lot of this stuff, but um, uh, there are times in these moon cycles uh, where the sun and the moon are on the same side of the earth. They line up uh, together. And there are times when the moon's on the other side of the earth from the sun. Uh, and obviously when they're lined up, uh, they are much stronger um, uh, signals. But uh, from my research on it, it's the actual change um, in the it, it, the gravitational pulls going from negative to positive to negative. And it's those actual chain cycles that are so important. And from there, uh, for those of you who want to get right into that stuff, go and uh, uh, buy an ephemeris. They're, they're published by uh, NASA Jet Laboratories. Um, and calculate the Daniel Code ratios between perigee to perigee and apogee to apogee. Very, very interesting. Uh, and there it is. So that was the high uh, in 2000. Um, and um, uh, this is, I'm now going to show you how this works. This was the 2009 low, uh, which I've talked about. We've had uh, uh, clients here who've been with us uh, for uh, so pretty much since we started um, in 2008, who've uh, been kind enough to say on these uh, webinars, yes, uh, they know they were at the tutorial which I was hosting in Tampa with their friends of the people who were at that tutorial uh, right when the uh, S&P made that uh, crash low uh, in March 2009. Now, if you didn't trade it, uh, you've probably forgotten uh, or never been aware how dramatic that was. Uh, but uh, there were some really serious consequences uh, getting towards the end of that uh, bear market. Um, all sorts of... Uh, Financial disasters, personal disasters, uh, brokers and uh, big traders jumping out of their windows and terrible, terrible stuff. Uh, but anyway, uh, we uh, we picked that low uh, to the day and uh, to the dollar. Um, and uh, we were, I was lucky enough that I was running a tutorial in Tapa, New Zealand at the time. So uh, uh, we had plenty of people who can say, yes, I was there. And uh, <coughs> we bought that low <coughs> with two hands <coughs> and sometimes a bit more. So if you just look at the basic chart, what have you got? You've got uh, your normal uh, daily bars, which you can see here. Uh, we can see that low came here in, uh, here in March, early March 2009. Uh, you can see the long-term stochastic um, has been oversold for quite a long period. Uh, Pretty limited stochastics. They're a fairly crude tool. Um, and as uh, uh, W.D. Gann opined, um, um, markets can stay um, oversold much longer than you can remain solvent. But they are just one of what will come together to give you the actual signals that we're talking about. So you start off, you can see this market's gone down again. It's taken out the old low. It still looks to be pretty much in free fall. So uh, the first thing we can do is we can put the Daniel Code numbers on the chart. And there was a Daniel Code blue line at 666, the number of the beast. Um, and there's an article under the Articles tab in the Daniel Code website. And it's called 666, the number of the beast. And that gives you uh, a detailed uh, account uh, of what happened in that extraordinary period. Um, and uh, a couple of the guys with me had come out from uh, Reading, California, and they were, uh, were people who were at the Bethel uh, School and the Bethel Church. Um, and uh, some of the things that happened were absolutely extraordinary. If you haven't read that article, um, and uh, please do. Um, you know, there's, uh, uh, there's more in life than uh, what you can see sometimes. Uh, extraordinary stuff. Um, 
and uh, but let's start with the first bit of information we can get. Once you have the Daniel code numbers, you can put them on your chart. And once they've gone through the Daniel code numbers, Gigi, we're coming to you in it later on today, you take them off your chart. And <clears throat> 666 was a blue line there. Now you can go to the Daniel Code website, uh, click on chart archives if you like. You can find the actual chart. Uh, all of this stuff is uh, filed chronologically and instantly. As soon as the uh, chart's released to you, they're available uh, under the archives tab. Uh, be patient when you open it, it's a huge file. Uh, every chart I've created uh, for members since. Uh, 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 December 2008, a whole lot of them, over 30,000 apparently. So there's the first thing we did. We got the Daniel Code blue line at 666 and put that on. So uh, that became important. And in fact, uh, the, what eventually happened is this was a, uh, a blue line trade and a TO3 trade. And let's see what else we've got. So uh, let's move on. Now what I've done is I've added the basic lunar time cycle. Now all I've put on here show you how basic this stuff is, is the new moon and the full moon. Putting on the apogees and perigees makes it a lot more accurate, but you'll be amazed how accurate this is anyway. Uh, so you can see the little dots on there, the yellow ones, of course, the full moon, the green ones um, are the new moons. <coughs> so we've done that. Now we can start to add the Daniel Code time cycle. This is the 70 cycle, the heathen, used to be called the heathen cycle. Uh, as of today, I'm changing it to Newton cycle. There's, there's nothing heathen about it. It's one of the, <coughs> excuse me, it's one of the Daniel code. It's one of the cycles that come from the book of Daniel. Uh, and Newton thought it was uh, the most important uh, cycle. Those of you who are interested uh, and you'd like to read that stuff, you can read Sir, Newton's, uh, Sir Isaac Newton's book. Uh, it's still available, it's free on the internet, uh, and it's called Observations on the Prophecies of St. Paul, uh, St. John, I'm sorry. Observations on the Prophecies of St. John. Um, and uh, you can see how he analyzes that uh, 70 period uh, in um, uh, uh, scriptural geometry. Very, very interesting. Uh, anyway, look, we start to add the uh, t Daniel Code time cycles. The first one comes from the blue line that you can see is on the left of your chart. That's where it's starting from. And that's a new moon. And you can see the 70 cycle comes on the uh, day of the uh, day straight after the low. Now, I've told you before, these time cycles are valid for plus or minus one period. The reason for that, and there are two real reasons. One is that they can start from either a swing high or a, um, a closing high. Uh, they're the ones we often use. Uh, when you're looking at the lunar cycles, uh, if they come on a weekend, uh, they'll be placed on the nearest day. So if the, uh, if, if the cycle expires on a Saturday, the, the indicator will go on the Friday. If it happens on the Sunday, it'll go on the Monday. So, but that means that you've got a variance um, of at least uh, plus or minus one day. So uh, we look at our time cycles, we say this is valid for plus or minus one day. So we can see there's our 70, uh, close enough to write on the low, it's actually one day past it, extraordinary stuff. Uh, and it's right at our 666. So we're starting to get time and price the way that Daniel Code used it, which is different uh, to how GAN used it. Let's move to the next chart. We've just moved the uh, timing tool along. This is now running from the next full moon that came last chart you saw was the new moon. This is running from the full moon uh, and uh, 59, twice. 29 is time, 59 is times, plural. This is the times cycle. And there it is, bang, right on the low. Magnificent stuff, isn't it? Okay. Let's keep moving. Uh, here we are. Uh, and now we can add some of the other DC cycles. This has added the Daniel Code 74 cycle, which is times and and half. Hits the low exactly. Uh, and uh, let's move on from there. This has now added um, uh, the 29 cycle, which is time. Um, and it's coming from um, 
one of the new moons. Perfectly accurate right on it. So you've got um, you've got the uh, 29 cycle, you've got the 74 cycle, you've got the 70 cycle, you've got three or four time cycles expiring right on the day of the low, all of which and price has stopped at that number 666 uh, and that's target recognition. Target recognition can happen on a bar high or low or on the close. If the market's going down, this one was crashing, you'd expect to see it on the low or the close. If the market's going up, you'll get target recognition on the high or the close. What is target recognition? It's that uh, point, either the high or the low or the close, within 0.1% of the Daniel Code number. That sounds pretty tight, doesn't it? In fact, real target recognition, which is going on all the time, is much, much tighter than that. We expect to see target recognition within a handful of ticks, uh, and uh, uh, it's quite extraordinary, and it does that all the time. So now we're at the stage, we have price at a known Daniel Code level, and we have time at one of the known Daniel Code ratios. And that's what I mean when I talk about time and price being squared. I did take that expression from Mr. Gann. I thought it was very delicate, uh, time and price being squared, but it doesn't mean what Gann thought it meant or what it did to him, or did to him, I should say. But to Daniel Code folks, it means that time is at a known Daniel Code support or resistance number and accurate to within 0.1% on target recognition. And price is at one of the known Daniel Code ratios uh, from, in this case, we're simply running it from full moon to new moon, which is pretty fantastic, isn't it? Uh, and uh, uh, we uh, can add to that not only apogees and perigees, uh, but we can then um, uh, add the longer term um, charts. Uh, and those of you who've been with us a while will recall uh, that uh, this um, uh, uh, March 2009 low came at a 59 cycle on the six day chart and the we already had the 59 cycle on the six day chart going into the 2007 high and once we had that cycle we looked for it to repeat okay uh, from proverbs um, uh, markets will repeat um, uh, there's, there's a very delicate um, and uh, lovely uh, quote uh, from Solomon um, in there uh, it shall be wonderful stuff. So there you are. That's the real setup for a Daniel Co. turn. When time and price are squared, a turn is almost inevitable. So there you are. So this is about, this is how we got this turn down here. And we, we do it all the time. I've been talking to you recently about the highs and the lows and in the last couple of months of trading, and they've all happened exactly the same way as I've shown you. There are Daniel Code uh, price levels and Daniel Code known, Daniel Code time ratios. You can't pick market turns without the Daniel Code numbers. The great difference with the Daniel Code to everything else you look at is the Daniel Code numbers when you're talking about price. And none of this low turn made any sense to you at all until the first number went on, which was the blue line at 666, and it worked its way down through all the other numbers. But having the Daniel Code lines is the essential part of all market terms, but it's also the essential difference with the Daniel Code to any other form of trading that you've seen or heard of. Um, add to that the lunar time turns, probability of a market turn increases exponentially. Um, and uh, we've just shown you the uh, basic uh, full moon and new moon cycles here. The apogee perigee cycles are uh, just as accurate, if not more accurate. Um, and then we have our, our long term forecasting, which works on um, high to high, low to high, um, as uh, uh, we do on our success uh, management. Okay, this is T Bonds. This is a uh, question that, uh, Gig, you raised the question about. Um, and so did Lockie. Um, so we've had a couple of people interested in this. Um, and what you're seeing is um, a combination of the success signals and the 
uh, TO3 plus signal. So uh, moving along, I'll just bring this up uh, uh, on the other chart for myself so I can give you the correct date. Um, so uh, we were uh, wandering along in a little bit of a congested market um, until we came to uh, September the 17th. It's got the arrow on it. Um, and the 6S program uh, gave us a stand aside message. In other words, uh, we were stopped out, we were flat. Action for today, stand aside. In other words, this market is probably consolidating. Get out of it, don't waste your time in it. Um, and in fact, as you can see from that point, it went from one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven days before we got the new TO3 plus signal to sell. Okay, so <clears throat> what happened there? Um, Gig, your first uh, point you made uh, was that this market went right down through the black line at 174 karat 02. I've added that to this chart. It's actually not on the members chart anymore because once the market's gone through these numbers, you take them off um, and you just add the next lot of numbers. Um, and the next sequence of numbers, the important ones, the uh, uh, Daniel Code blue line at 173 karat 20 and another one underneath it at 173 karat 15. Uh, let's move on, see what happened after that. Uh, there was our TO3 plus cell, uh, <clears throat> and uh, I've take, just taken off, uh, this is the same chart you've been looking at, I've just taken off the old numbers gig that had you confused. So this market's gone down, and it's got down to this 173.20 level, um, and uh, it's recognizing this uh, number very, very effectively. Let's have a look here. Uh, the low uh, of the big push down bar, which uh, came on our TO3 plus signal is 173 karat 22. The karat is the number after that little arrowhead, if you like. Um, and that low of 173 karat 22 is against the Daniel Code blue line, 173 karat 20. In other words, only two ticks variance. That's all. Nothing. Not a hair. Nothing. There's, there's your initial target recognition. However, at that stage, we don't quite have the setup to issue a TO3 blue line signal. So after the uh, day down, which was uh, October the 5th, we had target recognition. Uh, that created a TO3 signal. TO3 signals are turn signals. But again, the trade has to be elected. Let's continue looking at this. Now we've added the other recognition. You can see that the low two days later is 173 karat 10, and the close is 173 karat 18. So double target recognition. Uh, we've got the two DC numbers, 173.20 uh, and 173.15. Uh, so um, uh, the low is three ticks away from 173.15. Uh, the, uh, the close, rather, is three ticks away from the 173.15, and the low um, is um, uh, uh, right on uh, the 173.20, the 173.18. Uh, I've got that is the next low is 173.10. I might have the two different lows we're talking about. But there's your target recognition, very precise, very specific. Now, as this market has moved on, uh, you can see we're up to here. Uh, that now uh, the slow stochastic is oversold, the fast stochastic is oversold, and we have massive divergence on our proprietary momentum indicator. And those three conditions, the first one of which is target recognition, that's what sets up a blue line buy gig. Um, and uh, I'll show you how to find that, but uh, basically that's a buy, uh, but it needs to be elected. Uh, and uh, that hasn't happened yet. Uh, but that should uh, show you um, how you're going to trade this thing. Uh, so we have price down there at 173.20 uh, and 173.15. We have target recognition, now add time. Um, and you can see all we've done here, pretty easy. Uh, we've got a, um, 
uh, a 44 cycle um, coming from um, uh, one bar before the apogee. We've got a 74 cycle coming from a perigee all the way back there. Um, and you've got at least two time cycles, both expiring today. So we have price, we have time. The next thing we need is we need the trade to be elected. <coughs> and be very careful here. <coughs> Depends how skilled you are at trading. Uh, what we have at the moment is an inside bar. Today's bar was an inside bar. The time cycles are expiring uh, uh, tomorrow. Um, and um, uh, I say to new traders, don't trade the high and low of an inside bar. Trade the high and low or low of the last bar that was not itself an inside bar. Uh, you can see in this case to do that you're going to be quite a long way away from the price. So um, if you're a more uh, seasoned trader, particularly if you've done a Daniel Coe tutorial, uh, you know that you have to trade the highs and lows of the inside bars. So there's that setup gig. Does that uh, make it clear to you? Let me see if you've written anything. Um, Okay, let's uh, have a look at that. I'll just um, get out of this for a moment and show you the chart if you'll uh, bear with me for a moment, folks. Um, so um, here's the um, Daniel Code website. These are all the articles, incidentally. Uh, there's uh, 70 odd of them there. You should read them if you haven't already. Um, and under these uh, here, we have, our, um, uh, we have our various charts. This is the T-Bond chart. Uh, that um, Gig's confused about. Uh, Gig, this chart was posted on Wednesday night at about 7.30, 8.30 p.m. These, these charts are uh, updated on the weekend uh, and on Wednesday evening. So that's the chart. That's the only chart for T-bonds that's on there. You can see there's 173.15, the 173.20 is not on there. Uh, but you had your target recognition uh, anyway at the 173.15, uh, which is uh, because you had um, uh, that the the uh, uh, other the line on the other side came from the earlier bar, uh, so that was uh, the bar there. Uh, if you want to look at these uh, charts, uh, let me just take a moment to show you uh, chart archives is what you click on. It's a bit slow to open because it's a massive big chart. Uh, 2020 we want. And there's the 8th of October chart for T-bonds. Keep going back. Here we'll find the one immediately before it. This is the 5th of October T-bonds. So here's the member's chart. These are the old numbers which it went through. Gig, this is what you were referring to, <coughs> and they went they went through there. But as the as as the market goes past the numbers, if it doesn't recognise them, you take them off and just display the next lot of numbers, uh, and that's uh, what we had there. So, <coughs> excuse me. Okay, um, I hope that clarified things for you. If it doesn't. Uh, mate, I'm happy to uh, have a talk to you about it. Okay, so let's uh, uh, move on from there. We had a couple of other questions on that. This was the next question from Lockie, um, and he wanted to know, stop trading. Uh, the 6S market gave us a signal uh, for the 17th. That was uh, uh, this bar right here, uh, to stop trading. We've been trading this market long and short, um, and uh, Lockie wanted to know, what made you say it would stop trading? One of the things that markets do uh, when they're consolidating is that the close will be very close to a straight line. And you can actually see here, I put two blue lines in there. Um, they're not Daniel Code blue lines. I'm just trying to highlight to you the closes. There's a close over there. This close here is close enough to that close. So there's one, two, three. Okay, in fact, it's probably four as well. 
for this particular methodology, don't be too anal about it. If you're getting three, and it doesn't have to be three out of three, it can be three out of three, three out of four, three out of five, anywhere in a group together, three out of ten if you like. Once you get three closes in essentially a straight line, that tells you this market is probably consolidating. Um, and by knowing that, you save yourselves a whole lot of anguish uh, over the next one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven days. Um, and then this bar here, uh, this bar here, which uh, gave us the TO3 plus sell signal, the TO3 plus signals are continuation signals. Uh, and that came on October the 2nd. Um, wh why was that? That's, you see, there's been no breakout there. Um, and uh, that's not a true breakout. Uh, but I got that signal anyway, because the point at which uh, this is a key reversal bar, um, but the point at the high of this key reversal bar is at a very, very important level of support, uh, of resistance, I should say, which gave me a very strong indication uh, that we could uh, get back in this market on the short side. Uh, we didn't have to wait for the technical breakout, uh, which didn't happen, in fact, until uh, the uh, true breakout actually happened October the 5th, but we got uh, the signal the day before, so made all the lovely lolly. If you don't, if you don't know what lolly is, lovely lolly, it's lovely money. Uh, it's why we trade the business of trading. Uh, okay, Gig said, understand, uh, it was the website. That was not up to date. Well, it, it, it's up to date, gig. Wednesday. Wednesday. You may not have looked at it, but it was up to date. Okay, is that uh, is out for the moment, folks? No. A couple of points to make, just some commentary for you. Uh, if you are uh, subscribed to our website, Pro Signals, that's the 249 a month, you're entitled to two free success markets as well. Uh, and I've added those to your subscription, no charge. Uh, to try and make uh, that uh, more rewarding to you. The uh, the uh, 249 a month signals, that's the real backbone uh, of the Daniel Code, and I always want to try and do uh, something more to uh, help you with it. So don't forget, if you subscribe to the Pro uh, subscription now or in the future, you are entitled to two free success markets. Let Terry know what you want. Uh, he's at support at thedanielcode.com uh, and you can change those once a month uh, free of charge <coughs> and more often uh, afterwards Terry will probably uh, will charge you $30 uh, for every subsequent change but you can uh, free change once a month free of charge. Remember we always show the price at which trades are elected. You see the trade program link at our website and the success signals. We show you uh, always the, tr the price at which the trade is elected. Market, all Daniel Code signals are conditional until they are elected. So uh, remember that, folks, please, and it's all there. Um, if you have aspirations of being a, a super trader uh, and you'd like to do all the things that I'm doing and showing you, uh, time and price and total mastery, uh, you will become a super trader. Uh, please consider doing the Daniel Code trading tutorial. We now run it as a video uh, tutorial um, uh, because I'm locked down in Queensland. I couldn't get over to the States or anywhere else even if I wanted to um, and likely not for next year either apparently. We'll, we'll see what happens but uh, we've been using the video uh, tutorial method uh, for some time now. It's just one-on-one, -on -one, you and me. Uh, we record everything. We record the uh, each of the sessions, put them on a, one of our secure servers uh, so you can access them and refresh yourself um, as often as you like. Um, and uh, if you uh, if that interests you, uh, send me an email, jneedham at thedanielcode.com. I'll be happy to send you uh, some material uh, with the syllabus and a note on how the video tutorials work. They've been very, very successful, I must say. Um, and remember always that the business of trading futures and forex is not to be right. The business of trading is making money. Although it's clear to say if you've got one part right, the other will follow. Uh, if you haven't already had a free trial, you're most welcome to have a free trial of everything at the Daniel Code website. Uh, go to our website, www.thedanielcode.com uh, and just uh, hit the register button. That should automatically set you up 
for a 14-day free trial of everything on the website. If you have any issues at all, contact Terry at support of the danielco.com uh, and he'll get them sorted out. If you previously uh, registered as a member, um, the uh, website may not be too happy for you to uh, register again. It may get a bit choppy about that. So let Terry know. He'll fix it up um, uh, in an instant. Okay, folks, this is our uh, disclaimer statement. Um, I do like you to read this because I promise you it's very, very easy to lose money trading. 90% uh, of traders lose uh, their whole bank in the first 30 days. Um, and uh, you must make sure you know what you're doing before you start trading. Futures is the most marvelous trading tool. Uh, it's geared and it works exactly the same going up as going down. Uh, unlike stocks, you get paid both ways. Uh, just as much money going down as going up, uh, except the markets do tend to go down. Equities at least go down a little bit faster than they do. Dean has joined us. Dean, I wanted to congratulate you. Doubled your account in uh, August, 100%, fantastic, 100% plus, and about 70%, I think you said, for September. Wonderful stuff, mate. If you've been away, I sent you an email. You might look at it and uh, uh, reply to it if you would. Um, and uh, Akshay uh, wants to know how are the lunar cycles? Are they effective on currencies? Uh, absolutely, uh, absolutely, Akshay. Um, uh, I might even um, have a really quick example that I can show you. Uh, let me see if that's at all possible. Uh huh. Uh, let's see. One of these was quite, um, quite stunning. Look at this. This is uh, Canadian dollar chief. Look at that high. Bang, right at the uh, um, uh, full moon. Uh, there's one that I thought was uh, pretty interesting here for another reason. Uh, here's the euro. Um, Big time cycles on here, marvellous. Uh, and uh, there's one, if it's going to come to me. No, it was one that was missing a piece of data. It was pretty fantastic. Look at this. This is the uh, uh, Euro USD. There's your high, right at the full moon, one day off the perigee. You didn't even have to worry about <coughs> getting your Daniel Code time cycles, but. Uh, that's how they work, Daniel Code time cycles, uh, from all of those points. Okay, it's not going to show me the one I wanted to show you, uh, but you can see the same thing again and again. Look, there's your high. Uh, your low would have come off that perigee there. There's your next uh, counter trend high. Uh, there's the low coming off an apogee. Amazing stuff. All the same. Uh, just all works. There's the high. This is the next market. There's the perigee. There's the low. Uh, one day off the, two days off the closing low. Uh, here's the next high. Amazing, isn't it? Uh, and uh, of course, uh, gold. Wonderful stuff. There's gold. Look at it. Terrific. Okay. Um, so that's us for the uh, day, folks. Thank you uh, for being with us. Um, and I uh, look forward to uh, seeing you again at our next webinar. In the meantime, any questions you may have, please shoot me an email. Uh, and I'll be happy to uh, uh, include what we're doing in the next uh, webinar. Uh, Murph, thank you very much. Hank, thanks, mate. Uh, you too. Have a good one. It's a beautiful, beautiful day up here, I can tell you. Um, it's getting warm, uh, and it's Friday, and I've uh, placed all my orders, so it's, uh, it's a pool and, uh, and uh, Bloody Mary time. Uh, thanks, uh, Lisa. Good on you, mate. All the best. Thanks for being with us, folks. Talk soon. Bye for now.